That's a tremendous looking trophy. Well, welcome to Platinum Explosion, the number one PlayStation podcast in the Oceanias. I'm actually probably joining me today, Kieran Marchant. Hi, it's me, the guy from a forgotten age where there was, you know, the show was a completely different show. And it was. Here I can't I actually remember the last time you were on the show. It's been a very long time since I was on. Maybe I like think, I think it has been, three. Nah, I think it's sooner than 100? that. Just because it's been doing since you've been guys have been doing this quirky trophy stuff at the start, where you'd like list what the show's on by the yeah. different ranks of trophy. I've been on since then, but you know. Okay. I have no idea when that's <laughs> it's a, over. It's a very different. Uh, it's a very different show. It's now, a different actually. beast of so, which, killing you know Dylan. What? It's way better. It's way better than what it used to be. Just, you know, critically I think some of our fans myself. will will disagree. <laughs> 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 All right. This week in the trophy cabinet, a bronze trophy for the return of Days of Play, silver trophy for PSVR 2 rumors, gold trophy for new dual sensors, and we hit a platinum for a lot of PlayStation Studio games coming. Uh, but first, oh. Karen, you've been playing a lot of, or you've been playing some Returnal. Some Returnal. A case of, a case I have of not FOMO? been. I have not. It was. It definitely was. <laughs> I was. I was unsure of it. If you, you know, um, I haven't been back to it since uh, Resident Evil came out. It, it did then, come out at an awkward time, and then Mass Effect came out. And because I bought it, I think just because of like pays coming in and stuff, I got it like a week later. Anybody than everywhere else, and I guess a lot of other people had that extra time to to mess yeah. around with it and play with it and stuff. Um, I, I still loved it. It was still it was still a lot of fun. I think the furthest I got was. Which isn't very far at all. It's like the second, um, like the well, second, second, yeah, biome. I think they call it. Uh, but I was having a hell of a lot of fun with it. It was, it was really enjoyable. I liked the the atmosphere of that game so far. Um, the section in, going into the house, I was like, man, this is uh, this is kind of turned up the spook level to twenty. Even though there was already some pretty like kind of unnerving and spooky shit about that game, just in general with its setting. Um, I was, you know what. I am so grateful. I was thinking about this while I was playing it. I am so grateful for Hades. Because I think just because, like, Hades... Um, Hades, like, set my mind for playing rogue-like games. Mm. If I didn't have that, I prob- my brain probably wouldn't be as um, kind of ready for this and prepared to have this. Because this is probably a lot more... I don't want to say hardcore rogue game, but it's a lot more punishing than Hades in yes. many ways. Like, it's a lot more, you know, learning that water is yes. bad. is <laughs> like, water's bad, or like, you know, a couple of deaths where I've, like, misjudged the movement a little bit, and like, skidded off the end of a platform and died. That's happened yeah. to me a couple of times. Um, but no, I think I'm, I'm excited to, when I get a chance to go back to it, once, you know, Mass Effect's done, and, and I'm kind of caught up on, well, it's kind of a bad time now, because we've got Biomutant coming eventually, and then Ratchet and Clank, so then hopefully... Yeah, Ratchet and Clank is a big um, So hopefully some point in there I'll get a chance to kind of sit back down and put some decent amount of time into it. Um, I thought the weapons were interesting. I thought the enemies were really cool. The enemies, like, there was a lot of... Um, I really enjoyed, especially from that first area that I've, you know, played extensively. It's nice to kind of understand the rigmarole of it. Um, I put a tweet out when I first started playing it about <laughs> the first time I went into the boss fight with, like, the first biomes boss fight because I was, like, hella, hella cocky because I was, like, obliterating its health bar and I was like, man, people have been complaining about this being hard, not realising that there's, like, three other health bars at the top of it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that didn't end well for me. Um, but, no, no, I think, I think Return is a fantastic game. I can definitely see why a lot of people are kind of hedging their bets so far for Game of the Year on it. Um, I think Housemarque had done a great job. Um, I, I think they're doing a fantastic job of patching it to fit their ideals and patching it to um, to, to fit their um, what they want for the game because I think one of the things that came out when, when it originally came out was the difficulty of that game. And yes. then, of course, a number of... And I read a number of these articles of people trying to give tips... And one of the biggest tips was, hey, if you're in like the first or I think fourth act, you can go back and sleep in your ship as many times as you want to refill your health. Um, how's my patch that out? So you can only sleep once and then <laughs> you can't sleep again um, in that same life. So you have to. So I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that they have kind of stuck to their things that, you know, one of the core tenets of their company and their studio is the difficulty of their games. 
And, you know, I, I don't mind that. I think a lot of people where a lot of people like, oh, we want, you know, we want it like an easier or more acceptable. Or more... And I understand, I think this is where the, the conversation kind of separates, right? Because I think a lot of people have accessibility and difficulty of a game as like the same conversation. Um, yep. Whereas I think in many ways they're kind of separate conversations and the same conversation at the same time where i think games should have a vision of being hard and being difficult but at the same time they should be accessible to kind of to help people who aren't you know on an even level playing field as everybody else to play these games um yep. so i I'm, I'm really glad that house mark sticking to their guns and making sure you know it's a difficult game uh seeing people post their runs seeing people posting about finding the true ending and everything of the game i think the narrative of the game's awesome i think um I think loading into the game and things that you learn while like starting the game is very interesting. Stuff like how like your first run into the game isn't actually her like Celine's first time doing it and having all these kind of um, echoes in the world and finding different co- like logs from her time there. Um, I think it's all it's all very interesting and of course building on these roguelikes is and it was the important thing about Hades was the fact that um building that story while you're kind of you still feel like you're getting narrative progression even if you're stuck for a little while of dying and repeating everything um but no it's absolutely fantastic it deserves all the praise in the world that it's getting um and i'm very excited to get back to it whenever i get a chance to yeah yeah i mean it it, i think it's one of those games that it doesn't need to be in the zeitgeist for you to go back to it and you know no definitely like a roguelite you're like getting maybe time away could like help Ease your mind and like even like um <laughs> Hades is very much the the position for me personally where if I've got nothing better to do and I don't know what I want to do and I'm just randomly looking for a game I'll go play Hades for a couple of runs because it just kind of fits that itch and it doesn't you know I don't need to overcommit my brain to feeling in the right mood or anything it's just nice and so I think Returnal can fit in that same mood and that same kind of position. For <laughs> I will say there was a report this week that uh South Korea. Uh, rated uh, Hades on console, so Hades could potentially be coming to PS4. Yeah, uh, I, did see that. I did in see the that near in the near future, and I think which it... would make me replay the entire game again, probably. I yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think that's that that is definitely an experience and a narrative that is that is well worth playing it again. Um, I think, and I think Returnal has kind of could possibly have that same kind of. Um, appeal even though it's a lot uh, it is very much a lot there is a very a different setup in difficulty and yeah uh, in hades you there's clear progression like yes you get stronger yeah. each run yeah. returnal not so much no and, and even then there's like um returnal like, I've, I've i've been like uh, in between like uh when i moved from this first world by the first biome to the second biome i actually messaged dylan to be like hey can i just get some advice here i need to know bef- when i'm doing my runs from now on should I be rerunning the entire first section before moving on to the second section? Or should I be getting to the second gate as quick as possible and then moving on from there? Because there is like a, a scaling leveling that you have to do within each run where, rather than you already being leveled as you go into the run. Um, mm. I think it is, uh, yeah, it is very punishing. A lot of, you know, mistakes are very, very punishing. Uh, but at the same time, I'm I'm really enjoying that and really loving the um more metroid like um kind of things for it of you know um getting different items like of course the grappling hook you get at some point which i haven't got yet but knowing that all the way back through the first level there is plenty of places to use that and go back and use that and make sure you uh, take advantage of that ability as your runs change so um yeah i think i think it's fantastic i couldn't i couldn't say any more good grace about that game and i think a lot of people um around our community and in the industry are echoing much the same thought currently for returnal cool definitely uh all right let's move into some news and days of play is set to return this year uh so it's kicking off yesterday at time of release or today at time of recording uh so PlayStation confirmed it's Days of Play is returning for another year, bringing deals uh, and digital prizes just for playing games. Uh, so just like last year, all you have to do is sign up and play games in- to help unlock digital rewards for everyone who is signed up. You can play solo for at least an hour for, to, for it to count towards the game total. Play games with friends online to double your playtime and earn trophies. 
so stage one will begin May 18th and end May 24th. Requires all games to hit a total of 2.4 million games played and 7.2 million trophies earned. Uh, and if all the players do that, they get a PSN avatar, Days of Play themed, and a PS4 dynamic theme, Days of Play themed. Uh, if they have 3 million games played and 8.8 .8 million trophies earned, they get three PSN avatars, Astrobot, Gran Turismo 7, and Returnal. Uh, yeah, I think Days of Plays is, like, a cool, like, fun <laughs> event, but, you know, I think maybe Days of Play, obviously not included here, but obviously the deals for consoles and dual shocks and that kind of stuff, uh, it's kind of the more <laughs> thing I think most players will care more about, Definitely. but yeah, it's cool, it's a cool recurring event that PlayStation And I think it's, it's, looking at this, it's interesting how geared this is very much more to leaning towards a PS4 ecosystem than it is a PS5 ecosystem. It, it's because the PS5 ecosystem doesn't have themes. Exactly, exactly. It doesn't have themes. And then, I don't think it can have themes. What? Why not? Because, wait, actually, no, that's fucking... No, this is... I've never thought about this. If that's actually a thing, Ash, I'm sorry, that's fucking dumb. Not ha Why wouldn't they have themes? Because it'll get the way it's set up. Where you go scroll over a game, it shows you, like, a theme for the game. Yeah. But you gotta have a general theme, right? I guess. I guess not really. Uh, uh, none of the none of the tabs but, are really but, like a okay. general. All right, so that that moves on to then. Do you think they would also be able to bring some more incentives for the PS4? Even though there is the PS4 is an ecosystem that is much larger still currently. The PS5 is still yes. getting to the point where it's probably a little bit more. You can still have very, avatars, but you can still have avatars. But still, there's nothing that's like. I don't know. There's nothing there for me that looks says, "Hey, you're rewarded for playing games on PS5." It's just kind of, which I don't. It doesn't matter. It's this is a bonus extra thing. This isn't something that anybody should feel entitled for. Um, yeah. It's just it's just like an interesting um, perspective at the moment for PlayStation, and I think it's the there's always this awkward period of time where um, we are in between generations still. Um, where, you know, the kind of generational tilt and lean is very still far on the past generation. Um, which kind of, you know, it's, it's the same as me linking back to being not, you know, Mass Effect coming out with only a last generation version, but taking advantage of current gener of the new generation's features. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just one of those things. It'll be interested to see how this comes along, especially when PlayStation is still... There's still parts of PlayStation supporting PS3, um, even though they are slowly pulling back on that. Um, it's just a very interesting position for them to be in in terms of promotion and uh, they, these events at the moment. All right. Uh, jumping, I guess, kind of uh, on the PlayStation giving stuff away train. Uh, we've got our third round of PlayStation Play at Home uh, content, obviously the Play at Home campaign uh running for a second year encouraging people to stay home and like not get coronavirus i guess is the main idea uh this time uh obviously they had like 10 indie games earlier this year that you could uh get even if you don't have ps plus you just down add them to your library permanently then they had horizon zero dawn which just finished its run uh, as a play at home game uh now they've got a bunch of in-game content for a bunch of different playstation titles uh, so I'll run through the list here. Uh, Rocket League PlayStation Pack includes four unique customization items, including Blue Notch Wheels, Blue Smoke Boost, Blue Rocks Trail, and Tri Impact BL Player Banner. Uh, Brawlhalla Play at Home Pack includes the Rayman Un Legend Unlock, Sir Raylot Skin with Axe and Gauntlet Weapon Skins, Shrug Emoji, and Grim Sidekick. Uh, in Destruction All Stars, you get 100, uh, 1,100 destruction points. And will be the show. You get uh, 10 the show packs. Uh, NBA 2K21 uh, includes My Team Series 2, Amethyst, Damian Lillard, 5,000 my, my Team Points and more. Uh, Rogue Company, you can get a pack including a Kyoto undercover Ronin outfit <laughs> and 200 Rogue Bucks. Uh, World of Tanks and World of Warships, uh, you get twice the Courage pack for World of Tanks Modern Armor, which includes... Five one point five silver boosters, five times two times XP boosters, seven days of premium account and more. Uh, World of Warships, you get legend. No, includes tier three battleship Arca Arkansas. 
Fucking hell. Uh, seven days of premium on account and five rare boosters of all five types. Uh, in Warframe, you can get a thousand, 100 platinum, 100,000 credits, seven day affinity booster, essential base damage mod, bundle, and more. And in Call of Duty Warzone, you get five double XP tokens available from May 20th. Uh, through to, yeah, from May 20th. Uh, this is kind of the least interesting one of these for me, uh, of these games. I, I would actually I would barely any of these games I would play. Like, like, I think they're either, for me, it, it, like, so they either seem to be geared towards people who are already playing these games, just to yes. say, hey, play these games more. The only one there that I'm like, man, this is, this seems to be really encouraging people um, to jump into the game maybe the first time, I think is Warframe. I think Warframe has like a, a pack that kind of seems to yeah. encourage people to join and play and start it up for the first time and jump in with a bit of a added boost. Um, I think the rest of them are kind of like meh. Like that. Like it's like you know, this seems like the the, the it's interesting least... that half the list is for games that uh, you have to buy. Yes. Yes, very much so. It's it's very, it's a very in, like, it's it seems like it's low effort. I don't, and I don't want to say that because PlayStation doesn't have to do these, but when you compare yeah. them to their previous um, ones with like the ten indie games, um, Stay at Home, where we've had what Horizon now and Ratchet and Clank have been free through the same system. I yes, think they're included in this. Um, like this just seems a little underwhelming, so to say the least. Like I was really appreciative of like the the for Ratchet and Clank and stuff because I was like, oh cool, grab that version and play that before the new game comes out. Um, yeah, this That's is what it happen, is. is it? No, exactly. Maybe <laughs> no, because I finished Ratchet. I finished the original when the game was initially released in PlayStation Four. I finished that game in a day, so I could do it again. You if I had a solid it. day, I could just chill and just play Ratchet and Clank for the for the whole time. Um, yeah, no, it, it it's it's uh, it seems to be cool. If you're already into these games, awesome. You get a bit of added benefit. If you're not interested in these games, are you really going to be picking any of these up to jump in and play? Maybe Warframe, as I said. The rest of them, I don't think anybody would care unless you were already planning on jumping in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's they, like you said, they don't need to do this. Uh, but yeah, it's a nice gesture, uh, you know, to keep people happy. They're playing the PlayStations. But if you want another reason to be happy about getting a PlayStation, and if you've got a PS Five, woo! Uh, it's been revealed that there's going to be br- two brand new PS Five DualSense controller colors uh, set to release June eighteenth, less than a month away. My, is it a happy birthday to me. Uh, so Sony has confirmed that you'll be able to get an all midnight, uh, all black, midnight black, and black red cosmic red controllers, uh, coming yeah June eighteenth. What do you think of the, the the fancy new colors? Does this mean we're going to be getting well? Does this two, open the floodgates or two things? I think it definitely opens the floodgates. Cosmic red, fuck yes, I'm all aboard for that one. That one looks awesome. I think it looks great. The black one just confuses the shit out of me. <laughs> okay. Because Why I'm is- like, I'm like, there was this whole thing, right? There was this whole thing on the PlayStation 5 launch about the console being white. There was not going to be a black version yet. What? Why release the black controller now? You're eventually going to be releasing a black version of the PlayStation. If Sony says they're not, they're having a laugh because they've done it. For most of the consoles, there has been a variation color of them. Why not just say the black controller for the black console and release an interesting color now? Like, I think, I don't know, it was, I know a lot of people have been asking for them or a lot of people have been getting, like, black face plates and stuff done for the consoles, which Sony frowns upon. Um, but I, I, for me, I'm like, black, why don't you just save that for your black console launch whenever that is? And just release everything else up until then. Because for me, I think, you know, like, I think uh, the red con, the red controller, I think, would look good even with your white console. The black controller with the white console just seems off for me personally. Yeah, but who's putting the controller next to the console? Me when it's charging? I guess. 
because you know. But it goes with the black, the black it... middle bit. It's the same even, color. <laughs> even though I've even though I've looked, uh, you know, I haven't looked in a little while. It's still like ridic- I still can't find the official PlayStation um, charger, like, charger? like the control charger. Like, Interesting. Like I still can't couldn't find it a couple months ago. I'm, you know, too snobby and, you know, first party to go and get, like, the third party one. Um, well, you don't want to run the risk. Don't want to run the know? risk. They if always it, look if... bad. They always are just, mm, I'd rather it all just, you know, fit the same aesthetic. Um, so, you know, if I hadn't of like, I think actually I got it as a present for Christmas. If I hadn't got an additional controller already, I'd be even more inclined to go grab one because I think having two controllers is the current way to go, really, with the console. Um, mm. but at the same time, if you're going to buy a controller, if, 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 look, if you're, if you're looking for a PlayStation peripheral that you don't already have or an extra one that you don't have, don't buy the controller, go find the audio, the 3D audio headsets. Cause that headset is fucking awesome. And if you don't already have it, go get it for your PlayStation. Cause it's really good. Um, mm. and they're not that much more expensive than the controller. Maybe it is. I think it's like eighty bucks more, but still. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe during this place, <laughs> days of place, there'll be like a sale on the headset. Uh, interesting. The the cosmic red is ten dollars more than the probably, the, probably the deserves black. it because they put in more effort than the uh, the black one. Black one should have just been a console launch. <laughs> Sony, you stupid mother. <laughs> well, it just- hang on. Let me just. Uh, oh no, I was going to say the buttons are the same color, but no, they're not. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> The, the the white ones are fully white. I don't know. But yeah, I, I I like the. I prefer the black one over the red. I, I'm not don't get me wrong. The black one looks nice. It looks all in black because you know everybody and their mother said when the console was officially re- revealed, we were all like, man, that would look really cool in the black version. We'd really like a black controller, and yeah, it looks cool. But at the same time, no, give me the red one. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that they're going. Obviously, they're going. They're committing to this two tone kind of color scheme. With obviously the black. I think it's cool. I wish the they had chose a different bottom. Like, does that mean every single one is going to have I the black? I think so. Yeah, second it's going to have the black. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that because the I had the uh, I think it was called Bubblegum PlayStation controller uh, for PlayStation Four, and that had like blue and purple, and that shit was dope. That was really nice. Like, and I've got it over there in my um, bookcase because I I don't really feel like selling it ever because I'm like. Mm. It looks cool. I guess I guess it's easier to match with the the thumbsticks. So that's fair. Yeah, aesthetically it looks pretty good. But yeah, look forward to picking up one of those come mid June, so you know you don't mix up. You June eighteenth, uh, when you, you go by that, just tweet out at me and say happy birthday at the same time. Right? Just uh, just putting that out there. Just putting it out there <laughs> if you if you remember <laughs> fans. Connect my birthday with the more important controller release. Day. Listen, I know we're talking about June eighteenth, but June eleventh, Insomniac Games Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is out, and it's just been confirmed that they've gone gold. Uh, so there will definitely be Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart come June eleventh. It's hard to see it. Uh, like they'd have to pull like a full on Cyberpunk for it to be. Which I doubt. That date. <laughs> I doubt. I I think. Look, they've already. Um, they had already delayed it more than they wanted to. But technically, apparently, we're still in the launch window for um, the PlayStation Five because Ratchet and Clank was said to be coming out launch window even after it was you know delayed. Um, so I think I'm excited for Ratchet and Clank. I think everything we've looked at. I think Returnals made me look more forward to Ratchet and Clank just because Returnal felt like the first proper PS5 experience that we've had in a while. Um, and it's nice to have games. Like, even when I'm playing Mass Effect currently, I'm kind of like, it's great that I'm playing Mass Effect, but it is just a PlayStation 4 game. It's it's And it just makes it look a bit better. Even on the, you know, with the PlayStation 5, it only runs up to 60 frames a second, which is a, a bit sad considering these games seem to run better on the Xbox. For whatever reason, with their hardware, um, don't look at me like that. Xbox runs at like 120 frames a second for uh, Mass Effect, with by all regards. So, um, doesn't need it. Mm, Unnecessary frames. Mm, I just uh, uh, mm, this is somebody who oh no, this is <laughs> you with your fucking 1080p fucking TV. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you don't care. The TV misses half the frames anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> even though it is um, actually, there is actually tests done that even if you don't have a TV that will um, run at the higher frame rate, it is still beneficial for you to have the game running at a higher frame rate because it still communicates mm. that, which is uh, which is always interesting. But yes, um, back to the original point. I think um, I'm, I'm yeah. This look, this looks fantastic. I'm so excited for you know this game to run. And it seems like it set itself a really high bar in terms of the r- rifts between levels. In everything yep. we've seen has been fucking seamless. Like it has been nothing. Um, nothing for me has hit the same mark yet as fast travel in Mars Morales because fast travel in Mars Morales is the shit. It was that was like man. It's like it's this is honest. this is this is next gen. This is actually using the hardware because it was seamless. You didn't have an unnecessary loading screen. It was just instantly kind of loading around the map wherever you need to be. It was God's gift to trophy hunters. It was, you know, it's... <laughs> it's um, I think we're, we're very much in that point. So I'm really excited for Rifts Apart. I'm, I'm, I'm not only excited for Ratchet & Clank game because for, I guess, you know, unlike you, Dil, uh, Ashley, that grew up in with, you know, grew up with your, your Space Invaders and your Pong when games first came out in your early 20s. I grew up with the Ratchet and Clank, and I'm really excited for for more Ratchet and Clank and, and and bringing in more of this narrative writing and not having a movie tied into this game and actually being a game. Um, that's really nice. Um, yeah, no, it, it's going to be fantastic. I don't see them fucking this up. I I think this is going to be a excellent PlayStation Five experience. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, re- I'm super keen. I've read a couple of different previews on different sites in the last couple like week or so. Uh, it just looks beautiful. You know, it, it sounds like they've got a really interesting narrative. And, you know, I, I I'm keen. Oh, I, d- the, um, I appreciate the, they're going in on multiple characters and providing more character to the I world. will say, the, the someone I did like a gif of the Ratchet and River doing that, that, that Predator handshake mm-hmm. thing. Yep. That's the first time I noticed that she's got like a robotic arm. <laughs> Yep, I read that in like the the initial articles about them. Um, I think it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really I'm really excited. Can't can't get here soon enough, in my opinion. All right. Uh, interesting fact, Karen. Can you believe it's been six months since PlayStation Five launched? Nope. I can't believe it. And probably, you know what? I, I feel <laughs> this is where it feels bad. And <laughs> it's a, once again a proven thing for uh, what we're about to talk about. But man, my PlayStation has probably already paid itself off. My Xbox is. Uh, I don't think I've only mainly played like Assassin's Creed on my Xbox, and that's it, because I made myself buy it on Xbox. I think my dad's used my Xbox more recently than I have. Yeah. Um, How many Game Pass playing games have you played? I download them every now and then when I'm bored. I think Call of the Sea was the last one I uh, downloaded. It's just been released on PlayStation 5. Um, look, very different times for very different <laughs> companies at the moment. And uh, no, it, it, it does feel like it, it's not only is it a case of. Um, not only the case of it hasn't actually been that long, but at the same time, I feel very comfortable with my PlayStation 5. Like, my PlayStation 5 just naturally feels like my main console it feels like it's been my main console for some time now um even though i still my only gripe is always the fact that i still just muscle memory hold down the playstation button to turn it off when i should have yep, just tapped same. it every time um which is fucking annoying <laughs> and yeah, please no getting around that like yeah. yeah yeah it's just part of the ui now and it's just yeah getting used to that um but it, it's very much the the standard now for for console gaming in, in my opinion yeah. So I bring up the six months because uh, Jim Ryan had an interview with Wired Magazine uh, to celebrate the six months. Uh, so there's a bit of an interesting factoid. Uh, in a chat with Sony Interactive, Jim Ryan has revealed that out of the 7.8 million people who already own a PS5, which is a surprisingly high number given the, all the talk we have constantly about the shortages of PS5s, <laughs> uh, those users are spending way more time on the next gen console at this stage of its life compared to PS4 at the same point. For clarity, that time frame is from the console's launch in March. Uh, the PS4 launched here on November 29th, uh, November 29th, 2013, although Americans got the console for November 15th that year. Even, th- I will provide further context. 
and this is based off my memory, the PS4's launch lineup was garbage, right? And it was a very long time before games started to flow to coming out for that console. Yeah. And we yeah. weren't coming off the heels of a pandemic. So That's people true. were allowed to go outside and live that well, life. Yeah. I think there's a cu- one other major factor in this. But uh, yeah, according to the figure supplied by Sony, users have spent 81% more time logged into their PS5 than they did on their PS4 from their respective launches through to the end of March. People are buying more games too, 11% more game units, presumably individual titles and not to say overall game sales that would include bits of DLC or V-Bucks, have been sold over the first five months of the PS5's launch compared to the same period for PS4. I think that 81% more time logged in is because of backwards compatibility. Well, so backwards compatibility (laughs) and streaming services. That's true. Because that would count for everybody watching your Netflix, your Amazon Prime, your YouTube, your Twitch, all on your console. That's true. But yeah. um, if we if we compare, the thing is right. If you compare the gaming landscape in 2013 to the current climate of gaming, very very or current climate for consoles, very different locations. 2013, you had never heard of what the fuck a V Buck is. Fortnite <laughs> was a Fortnite was a twinkle in somebody's eye. It was, you know, those kinds of things. Gaming was a very different place. Um, Netflix wasn't really largely accepted at that point or wasn't as commercially uh, used at that point as it is now. I think the... the This is the funny thing, right? Xbox at that time in 2013 was trying to make their consoles a home entertainment system. Were trying Mm. to make their consoles have, you know... NFL built in and, and have everything integrated and gamers went, no, we don't want that. Really, Microsoft just were too early. They just were they were just too early and too focused on that fact. Whereas nowadays, your consoles are your entertainment media systems. Hub. You know, they're your media systems now. You you turn on your console not just to play games, but to load up YouTube when you do when you need background noise or open up Netflix or, you know, there are people who in their life have probably never touched a console before, but use a console now just to open up Netflix. I know so many friends that have, you know, girlfriends or partners that don't play games, but they'll use the console to use all their streaming services. I think it's just, I think there is just a lot of factors that do skew and inflate those results when you try and compare them across the um, the, the eight-year time difference between them. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, it's an interesting factoid, uh, you know, and it just means that, you know, people love their PlayStation 5s if they can get their hands on them. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's not. I feel like it's not as bad here in Australia, right? Maybe that's just because of the 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 community and the social media bubble I'm in, where a lot of people are those kind of um, first wave people who are trying to get their hands on PlayStations. But I, I still constantly see in America posts popping up of people being like, "Hey, finally got a PlayStation pre order." Um, I feel like EB Games have gotten through all of their pre orders and stuff now, and it's just yeah, pe- just you know, new people. Yeah, it's just new people now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so in that wide interview, uh, they had a quote. They interviewed uh, Herman Holst, obviously head of PlayStation Studios Worldwide, whatever the correct term is. <laughs> uh, but he revealed that PlayStation Studios has more than 25 titles currently in development for PlayStation 5. Half of these games are said to be new franchises. Uh, of course, uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that these 25 games are first-party games uh, like from studios like Insomniac, Guerrilla Games, Naughty Dog, and so on. Uh, seeing as both uh, Sackboy is a big venture and Returnal were published under the PlayStation Studios banner but were developed by not studios not owned by Sony, Sumo Digital, and Housemark in these instances, respectively. Uh, but that is a high number of games coming in the future that we don't really know <laughs> i mean having a quick look there's what uh confirmed for the first party is god of war sequel uh horizon F- forbidden west ratchet and clank and then gran turismo 7 um and you can probably guess at a few other titles that would potentially be mm-hmm. like yeah. uh, kenna um and stuff like that but mm-hmm. 25 that's like very promising they've got that's a promising. lot of stuff down like, the pipeline um, 
as as I alluded to earlier, like PlayStation Four, the PlayStation Four initial launch was a little bit of a drought for a lot of game for a lot of PlayStation fans because they spent a year without really getting much first party releases. But at the same time, PlayStation have laid the foundations in their first party studios to have it. So they have a really strong foundation now. They have this really strong lineup of studios and games that are um, building and bringing out exclusives regularly. It's the same point. Microsoft's doing their best to try and scurry and catch up, but they have to do that foundation work that Sony have already done. Um and they're taking the thing. No, but like you can say, you can you can by throwing people. money at it. You can <laughs> yes, but that's what. But PlayStation did very similar things. Like PlayStation threw money at several studios when they were building at the same time. And I think PlayStation have just done the smarter thing, and they've been smarter about this, and they're very good at their first party exclusives. And I hope one day that Microsoft is kind of can match that, not from a competitive standpoint, but so that we get more fantastic like a quality standpoint. Yeah. Yeah, from a quality standpoint. So we get more fantastic first-party studio games because I don't really, you know, for every for every amazing first-party exclusive that Sony release, third-party games are very hit and miss and they don't live up to that same standard for whatever reason. Whether that be that mm. the first-party studios are given more time and discretion for their games to be released rather than these other third-party studios that are kind of maybe more wanting them to be yearly releases and kind of pushing for games to be kind of coming out a lot sooner, a lot faster and not always having that luxury to wait. Yeah, it's an interesting thing where I can't think of the last, well, I guess Day is Gone were technically the last underperforming critically first party game. And even then, yes. that's that's a very mixed... That's a very like, mixed bag. Obviously. That was yeah. a game that was very much marred by technical issues on its launch. Yes. And then we've had the last couple of months where people have the the news has come out that Sony isn't pursuing Days Gone 2, that Sony that Bend is working on something else. Um and, you know, a lot of fans have come out the woodwork and been like, what the hell? Why isn't this? And, and it's caused that, yeah. that there's that kind of discussion about buying that game when it's launched. And and you know, I'm very much a person that didn't buy that game when it launched, got it when it was on sale. And I'm a very big fan of that game now. I'm a very big supporter yeah. of Days Gone. I think it's a fantastic title. Um and and I, I, I'm excited for maybe one day for them to go back to it. But yeah, it's a it's a they've done a great but yeah, job. Still a pretty good strike rate of yeah, definitely. For- quality Definitely. i don't i think it maybe it just goes to show this level of scrutiny that playstation puts and like the network i guess of studios well, working kind of it's, sharing it's it's the work they put in when they were building playstation studios from that point of the start of that playstation 4 generation and before that even it's the it's the effort they've put in there where they aren't grabbing developers and been like hey we've made you a first party studio we need you to release games yesterday They've gone, cool, you're now a studio of ours. Release whatever you've got on now, or whatever you're currently working on, but then let's take some time and actually build a property and build this together and work, you know? There's the the God of War um, the God of War documentary or video where they talk yeah. about how long they spent figuring out Kratos' axe and fix that. Do you think if they weren't a first-party studio they would have that same time and delicacy and attention to detail? to spend that much time working on that individual no. mechanic for the game. Even though it's a very important mechanic for that entire game, it is still the amount of effort and attention to detail they put into that is absolutely amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah. I guess there's not as much pressure on... Well, there's a, cert- a lot of pressure. There isn't the same type of pressure as no. uh, a EA or an Activision that needs each game to sell a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Because it's going to be on multiple consoles, it's going to be... Yeah, exactly. It's a larger part of their pie, each game, whereas the Sony exclusives are probably... But also around exclusives, there's more of a presumption around exclusives that people are going to buy them because they are PlayStation exclusives. Because you can only get them here, yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's more of a, I have a PlayStation, I'm going to buy the exclusives for my PlayStation. Whereas third-party games do have to fight a little bit more for trying to get people to take the money out of their pockets and buy their games. 
All right. Uh, let's jump into our VR worlds. Uh, we've got some PSVR 2 reports. Uh, so I'm just going to read this article from Upload VR. Exclusive next-gen PlayStation VR is 4K with full vetted rendering and vibration feature. Now, Kieran, you you haven't got any VR stuff at all, have you? No, I've got none. None. Okay. I'll talk about this and then we'll jump in to see whether this is convinced you into picking up this uh, in the future. Sony's next-gen VR headset from PlayStation 5 has significant high-resolution inside-out tracking, a vibration motor, and even full vetted rendering for reliable sources to upload VR. We don't know the product's name, but multiple sources tell us Sony's shared details with partners. Those details include a reservation resolution of 4,000 by 2,040 pixels. Uh... So that's 2,000 by 2,040 per an eye, a lens separation adjustment dial, and a gaze tracking capable of four-viewed rendering. A motor in the headset can be used by developers to give direct haptic feedback. Uh, Sony previously confirmed it is developing a next-gen wide VR headset for PS5, which released sometime after 2021, and revealed the controllers for the upcoming device with analog sticks and finger positioning sensors plus resistive triggers that can push back at your fingers when pressed, as seen in the PS5's DualSense controller. Uh, the resolution of the upcoming Sony headset is slightly less than the HP Reverb, Reverb G2, the current market leader in the consumer VR headset resolution, and slightly more than the Oculus Quest 2. The resolution would should amount to roughly 8.16 million total pixels. The next... Uh, the new VR headset will use a USB Type-C connection from the console and the headset. PlayStation 5 features a single USB-C port on the front of the device. Uh, the new Sony headset will have an onboard cameras to track the position of the new controllers, thereby simplifying setup dramatically compared to the current generation and unlocking more movement freedom for the player. Uh, through this part, though this part is speculation, it is possible that the planned inclusion of forwarded rendering the perceived sharpness provided by the upcoming Sony headset might be much improved compared to the current systems by way of super sampling the area focus. Eye tracking can also dramatically change the sense of social connection made between avatars and VR. Generally speaking, the technology allows for subtler expression, translating to a more profound sense of actually being together with another person in a virtual world. Eye tracking could also be employed for other uses, such as much better throwing mechanics that take into account what a player is looking at when they release a virtual object. Demos provided by Toby on this eye tracking technology used in some professional level headsets show precisely this use case. Uh, PlayStation's uh, PSVR headset sold more than 5 million units through the end of 2019 with a much lauded hollow strap design that's been licensed by other manufacturers such as Lenovo. PSVR relies on its wired connection to the wonderful to the nearby PlayStation to provide processing and deliver power to the headset. The first generation headset started shipping in 2016 with the positional tracking provided by a wired camera mounted to, next to your play space. Controllers were provided by either a gamepad or the booth controllers which originally shipped in 2010. Taken all together, the new features define a truly next-generation virtual reality experience planned for Sony for PS5 owners. Resistive triggers could differentiate Sony's VR experience from those, while the inclusion of eye tracking could may take the technology to mass-market consumers for the first time. Meanwhile, the higher resolution and easier setup would be dramatic improvements compared to the first-generation PSVR system. Uh, Facebook's expected to sell the wireless Oculus Quest 2 for a while, uh, and the company CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, said recently some other folks might try to ship something that they claim to be high quality, but has a wire. And I don't think that's what consumers want to go for. Uh, the company is openly exploring a more censored laden Quest Pro, with Zuckerberg mentioning in a recent interview he's interested in future quests, including eye tracking and face tracking. Apple is also exploring a VR headset, while HTC is focusing on the business market and Valve, which shipped the high end index in 2019, confirmed last year, it is currently still working on wire solutions. For VR, Microsoft supports open source efforts in VR. Is there a vacation? Xbox VR is likely to happen. Uh, while 2021 is shaping up to be the Quest 2's year selling standalone wireless VR at an unmatched price of $299 from 2022 onward, it may be a whole new ball game for VR. Um, did any of that make any sense to you? Or <laughs> um, it did. It did. Good. Um, I think this is an interesting position, right? 
And I think I think what what actually sells me on PlayStation VR is when it's eventually, and we won't know this until it's released. Mm-hmm. How well it integrates into the PlayStation Five? Yes, because the PlayStation when the PlayStation Five was released, and we got all the information about how people were to use their PSVR with it. They have to get this dongle. Um, it was a bit worrying for me because it looked like they had designed this new console without any kind of thought or idea towards. VR. Mm -hmm. And so, if there are no extra peripherals needed for, as in in terms of dongles or hubs to plug your VR headset into, if it already is integrated into PlayStation 5. If it's just one cable. It's just one cable or a couple cables you plug into your PlayStation 5 and it it integrates and works. Fuck yeah, let's go. Awesome. If it's like, cool, you've also got to plug this thing in and you need to do this with your PlayStation 5 and do this. Then it just seems like uh, it's a bit worrying when it's almost like there is um, Sony as a company isn't working together. That their console mm. team and their VR team are working very separately, and they're not tackling the same challenge together. So I, I'm I'm on one hand very worried, it, it, not worried, but on one hand I am kind of cautious about this and, and cautious about the places of VR, um, but at the same time. I'm always interested in VR. VR has always been something I've been interested in. Never enough for me to jump in because I, I think, for me personally, to play VR, to think PR, VR is worth it, is I need more, um, more experiences and more games that are more to that level of your Resident Evil Seven when it came out. You could play the entire game in VR or um, uh, Half Life Alex for the that the came out in the Vive, where it's like a a full experience or game that is designed to be played with the VR. It's not like a couple hours of fun and then I'm done with it. Um, so look, it, it's something to kind of wait and see um, and we shall kind of just not I don't want to say hold your breath, but for me personally, it's a it's a once we actually get some concrete details about the unit and the console and some people to, to kind of to talk about how that interacts together, um, I think is, is really important. Yeah. Yeah, all this sounds really promising, obviously. Uh, the smaller, obviously, the high resolution is going to be really helpful. Um, the potential of eye tracking could potentially be like a really important thing. The game's going forward and make it certain things a lot easier. Something like a Iron Man VR, uh, where you're trying to shoot stuff in the air while <laughs> you know moving mm-hmm. around at the same time, like that could potentially yes. be so much easier. Uh, especially on top of getting brand new controllers and not using technology from a decade ago. Yes. Uh, to- <laughs> to play vr um yeah even i think like uh what was it what was the other simple stuff like lens separation adjustment like that might be super useful for like finding that perfect sweet spot like sometimes it can be difficult with vr headsets to get that right spot where everything is perfectly clear for you uh depending on where your eye how your face is set up i guess uh but yeah this is really promising i think uh of course the wire is going to be a thing that's going to hold people back, but I think like one wire is not going to be that massive a hassle. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they'll d- hopefully they definitely follow through on that and figure out a way to make it. A- one, it has to be very long. Two, it has to be figure out a way to make sure it doesn't like pull out easily, or you don't yank your PS Five off. Whatever. Yes. Yeah. Correct. That's the only issue I see going forward. Uh, but other than that, yeah, really promising. I guess the other thing will be price point. Uh, if they can come close to matching the Oculus Quest price wise, that'd be um, good. And I think that you would know, be like the perfect. PlayStation. The PlayStation, like the original PSVR, was priced very well, and it was it was mm. almost known as the affordable unit. Like it wasn't the best VR unit, but it was the no. most affordable and usable unit for the consumer. So. Um, if they can continue to do that, I think um, that would be yeah, fantastic for them. Yeah, I mean, because most of the tech, the processing power and stuff is still in the PS5. Yes. So, yeah. I guess you could still, like, you're still putting a lot of stuff in the headset, but yeah, it's obviously not everything. Yeah, it's not absolutely. Compared to the exactly. Quest. But yeah, looking forward to more PS5? No, PSVR news <laughs> in the future. Uh, yeah. Uh, one last thing, Dylan, uh, Kieran, we've both been playing Mass Effect. Um, 
really good game. You should check out this week's episode of RK Couch where we talk about that. I want to bring up the trophy lists because, damn, they're really good. There's, you get three platinum trophies at the price of one, but then you also get a bonus fourth trophy list for the Mass Effect Ledger Edition. I would say this is an awesome uh, trophy list, but it does require you to complete all three games on insanity difficulty without changing difficulty. <laughs> Did you, did you see that before I you jumped in? I did not see that one. That one's kind of insane. But at the same time, I think... I think once you... If you've played through them all once, on just like a lower difficulty, I think you would do kind of... It would be fine to do it. And and even on that run, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to live and survive. Like, if you play your normal runs and you're like, man, done my stuff. Got my characters the way I wanted them. Got my character stories the way I wanted them. Everybody in the game is, that I've wanted to has survived. If you've done that in a normal playthrough, then go through your insane playthrough. It's just a trophy playthrough and not a, I really, really care about what happens here. Which is a mm. sad thing, but at the same time, I think it, it does kind of... But at least, at least that is only in the bonus trophies. Yes. You don't need to do that to get the platinums. Like, I haven't looked... I haven't looked... Ugh, actually, no, I have. So I actually think that all the... At least the Mass Effect 1 and 2 trophy lists are very similar. Um, but they're both super doable and super like straightforward. I think there's only one that I'm kind of a bit iffy on in Mass Effect 1 that I think I have to kind of go back and do and work out exactly how to do it because it's a bit of a grey area because it's about collecting codexes. Um, yeah. And uh, like that one's a bit grey. You have get all no... the alien codexes. Whatever. Yeah, you have to get a codex on every uh, feature, like every council and non-council alien race. Um, but yeah. There's no kind of clear at the minute. I haven't seen if anybody's put out a guide yet for it. I mean, all the guides I've seen haven't. There's no clear. Okay, go do this, 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 and this, and you get the codex. All I've seen is, hey, talk to everybody and make sure you have used every single um, dialogue tree possible, and you should get it. Mm. Which I, I felt like I did, but maybe I haven't done it to the right person, um, and I missed that on my first playthrough. But it is doable. You do have to be. You do have to um, be mindful of the fact. Um, my advice for any trophy hunter when you start the game it, you go through the settings one of the settings is about how your team uses their abilities um, don't have that set to either defensive only or off because there are trophies that need you to use certain abilities 25 times and that only triggers those abilities if either you use them on your character or you manually tell your team to use those abilities your team automatically using those abilities does not inc- does not seem to contribute at all to those trophies. I feel like that, that that's an easy one to cheese later if you need to. Um, it was it was uh, towards the end. I was cheesing some of them. Like I was just there's one for barrier, which is just putting barrier on your character. So as I was running around places, I was just forcing them to turn that ability on all the time, and you'd eventually yeah. get it. Um, it also means that you have to be aware of your party makeups and who's got what abilities, and also maybe for your own character as well to pick a. Character, the class that's going to have some abilities that maybe your party members either won't have or won't be featured as easily. So, uh, yeah, it's it, on a whole, I think they're fantastic trophy lists. So anybody playing it should definitely try and obtain them. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let us know what you thought of Mass Effect's trophies about PlayStation Plus, about PlayStation Days of Play, <laughs> about PS5 news, anything we talked about on this week's. Uh, Platinum Explosion by going to explosion.com slash Twitter. All our Twitter handles are there and you can tweet at us or you can jump to our Discord at explosion.com slash Discord. If you liked this episode and thought it was worth a dollar, head on over to our Kofi page at explosion.com slash support. Buy us a coffee or you can jump into our general support page at explosion.com slash support us. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Kieran, for being here. And remember, every trophy counts. <laughs>